My name is Nick, and I'm going to be the next school shooter of 2018. My goal is at least 20 people with an AR-15 and a couple tracer rounds. I think I can do a good done. Location is Stone Douglas in Parkland, Florida. It's going to be a big event. And when you see me on the news, you'll all know who I am. <laughs> You're all going to die. Today is the day. The day that it all begins. The day of my massacre shall begin. All the kids in school will run in fear and hide. From the wrath of my power, they will know who I am. I am nothing. I am no one. My life is nothing and meaningless. Everything that I hold dear, I let go beyond your half. Every day I see the world ending another day. I live a lone life, live in seclusion and solitude. I hate everyone and everything. With the power of my AR, you will all know who I am. I had enough of being told what to do and when to do. I had enough of being telling me that I'm an idiot and a dumbass. But in real life, you're all the dumbass. You're all stupid and brainwashed by these and political government programs. You will all see, you will all know who my name is. My love for you, Angie, will never go away. I hope to see you in the afterlife. From one day or another, you will end and we'll all die. All right, so here's the plan. I'm gonna go take an Uber in the afternoon before 2.40. From there, I'll go into the to school campus, walk up the stairs, load my bags, and get my AR and shoot people down at the main, was it the main courtyard? I'll wait, and people will die. Hey everyone, I want to talk to you about teen killers, school shooters, and why teens kill today. When I first started my career out, I focused solely on teen killers and school shooters. I interviewed hundreds of teen killers. Um, in 2009, this book came out called Inside the Mind of a Teen Killer. I started researching and writing the book in 1999. Uh, when the Columbine attack happened, it really shook me up and I realized I need to find out why teens kill. So I interviewed over 200 teen killers, school shooters. I studied thousands of cases, came out with the book Inside the Mind of a Teen Killer. My latest release is called The Teen Killer Whisperer. This book is available on my website. You can get a signed copy if you want an updated version. But this one is a landmark book that's been used by law enforcement, school administrators. Um, there's been several studies that have come out since that book came out. The Secret Service report, the FBI uh, profile, and the Homeland Security. None of it went against what I had been talking about reporting in my findings. A new report highlighting security failures in the Parkland School Massacre. Now, this as chilling images emerge of the accused shooter inside Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School during the attack. So I want to just share with you the, the causes, warning signs, triggers of teen murder. And I just want to get this on my YouTube channel so you guys have this information. Um, so in my opinion, after all these interviews and all the studies and years and decades of doing this, I've, I've come up with 13 reasons why, 13 causes of teen murder, reasons why teenagers kill. Again, teenagers are 13 through 19. About five teenagers kill every day in the United States of America, five a day every day. About 12 young people kill themselves every day. When it comes to teen murder, you need a multi, it's, you can't just have one cause. Like it's a multiple cause crime, okay? So you can't just say if you play Grand Theft Auto, you're gonna kill people. If you come from poverty, you're gonna kill people. If you come from a divorced home, you're gonna kill people because there'd be millions of killers, right? So it takes multiple causes. I've seen it like three to five at least. Keep in mind as I read these, it's not just one cause, it's multiple causes. 
and I rank them like I saw them. So let's start with the least and go to the most, okay? Least common to most common. Least common, mental illness. Not a lot of teen killers are mentally ill, maybe only 10 to 20%. Actually, that's the same for all killers. Most killers aren't crazy. They're not mentally ill. Number 12, no spiritual guidance, no discipline in their life. They have no reason to live. Number 11, poverty. Poverty does lead to violent crime. It can. Number 10, peer pressure. Who are they hanging out with? Is your son hanging out with Dylan Klebold? Number nine, involvement in gangs, cults, hate groups. That could lead you down the wrong path of violence. Number, number eight, uh, a lot of these kids want to be famous. They know if they kill people, they might get some fame. Seven, they're using alcohol, drugs, pills, medication. They're intoxicated. Number six, they want to die themselves. Number five, top five. Number five, they're obsessed with all kinds of deadly weapons, guns, bombs, and knives. They're obsessed. Number four, they're obsessed with violent entertainment, violent movies, torture films, violent pornography, video games, mostly video games, violent video games. You know, we didn't have a lot of this stuff before the violent video games came out. I'm not saying it's the number one cause, but it definitely has been a factor. Number four is a violent entertainment. Number three, bullying. Being bullied. It's the number one cause of school shootings, even still today. Number two, unstable home. Something's not right at home. There's physical, mental, verbal, sexual abuse. Number one, no daddy, no father. The fatherless generation. Um, the connector of all killers, teen killer, school shooter, mass murder, serial killer, the connector of all killers is no dad or a really bad dad. And number two, just unstable home. Good morning to you guys. Those images from inside the high school showing the moments leading up to that deadly rampage and a series of apparent security failures by police and school officials. A warning if there are children in the room, the content here may be disturbing. Possible shots fired at Stoneman Douglas High School. This morning, chilling images and 911 calls from the Parkland Massacre, painting a timeline of terror. 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz seen here loading an AR-15 in the hallway of Stoneman Douglas High School as a frightened freshman walks past. The Sun Sentinel reporting that according to that freshman, Cruz telling him, you'd better get out of here, things are going to start getting messy. Moments later, Cruz killing 17 students and staff. You have three to five causes put you in the danger zone. Now we're worried. Now we're looking for warning signs. Okay, let me give you some warning signs. Here we go. I'll give you 12. Cruelty to animals. Torturing animals. Killing torturing animals. Fire starting. Playing with fire and explosives. Bedwetting in a teen years. Drawing violent photos. Writing violent stories. Taking photos, posting pictures, displaying weapons. Pointing guns at Instagram. Whatever you have. Whatever kind of account you have. Snapchat. Um, six, making a verbal statement or hand gesture threatening violence. I'm going to kill you. I should just kill the English teacher. I'm going to kill this whole school. Warning sign. Number seven, uh, violent, depressing schoolwork, artwork, drawings, writings. You know, drawing pictures of guns, drawing pictures of killing people. Um, posting violent thoughts, philosophies, and social media. Depressing violent thoughts. Nine. Fascination with guns, bombs, and knives is a warning sign. Someone can't, like, they can't get enough of violent, you know, weapons, dangerous weapons, deadly weapons, guns, bombs, knives, swords, hatchets. Number 10, obsession with violent entertainment. It's a warning sign. Some people can't get enough of violent porn. They can't get enough of violent video games. They're obsessed. They play for a week straight, whatever. The average teen, teenager plays violent video games. When they're obsessed, they play it like almost all day, like 18 hours a day. Uh, there'll be a change in some behavior, maybe some dress. And fascination with other school shootings, serial killers, mass murderers like Columbine. Big fans of Columbine. So you got three to five causes put you in the danger zone. It only takes one warning sign. If you do get the warning sign, you better get these people some help because if not, we are... Getting dangerously close to a possible crime. 911, what is your emergency? I think I hear gunshots. What is the address of your heart attack, sir? I don't know. I'm at the, in Parkland, Isles. It sounds like it's over towards the high school, over towards Douglas. Might have been gunshots maybe 15 minutes ago or so, and then I just heard four or five right in a row just a few minutes ago. 
Teen killers don't kill without a trigger. There are six triggers, in my opinion, that cause kids to become killers. Uh, they get suspended or expelled from school. They're arrested, even for minor traffic incidents. Uh, they have a dispute with their parents over video games, curfew, cell phone, something's going on, something bad. Uh, they get have a breakup with the boyfriend or girlfriend. Uh, there's a major bullying incident. They get their pants pulled down. They get something dumped on top of their head, whatever. And number six, and the last trigger, uh, parents saying you can't date this boy or girl. The number one trigger of male teen killers and school shooters is when their girlfriends dump them. And I say girlfriends because I don't know of any school shooters or teen killers that were dumped by their boyfriends. Number one trigger for female killers is when mom and dad tell her you can't date someone. What is the solution to this, people? We need to get these kids help. We need to get intervention. They need to talk to a counselor or a therapist. They might need to go away to a facility for six months to a year. They need intervention. They don't just need a smack on the wrist um, three nights, a uh, weekend in a hospital, they don't need that. They need serious intervention. I have, uh, if you go to my website, philchalmers.com slash notes, you'll be able to download my notebook and it has the causes, warning signs, triggers, but it also has this really interesting interview, 31 questions for a potentially violent juvenile. And so um, I want you to go and do philchalmers.com slash notes and download my notebook. And then you have the causes the warning signs, the triggers, and this interview that be, could be used by parents or law enforcement or school administrators. Questions like, you know, has there been any trauma or abuse in your life? If, you're, if I'm interviewing a teenager, I'm asking these questions. Um, have you suffered any loss? Uh, has there been a divorce in your family, a breakup or a death of a loved one or being bullied? Are you experiencing domestic violence? Are there any signs of suicide in your life? Are you, do you want to hurt yourself? It just gives you all the, have you, have, you, have you tortured or killed any animals? And you just walk them through 31 questions to find out how dangerous or how serious they might be. I would also do this interview with the parents alone. So the, the student alone and the parents alone. Are you interested in serial killers? Are you fascinated with school shootings? All right. And you just walk them through the list. And uh, the parents could probably answer more questions than the juvenile, but the juvenile may talk about what's going on at home. So we have causes, warning signs, triggers of juvenile killers and school shooters. Um, we are doing a really good job of keeping the mass murder school shootings down. Uh, we haven't had a whole lot in the last few years. Thank God some of it's because the schools are locked down. But even before that, there's only been about five school shootings a year or less. There were five school shootings in 2018. There were none in 2019, none in 2020, and so far. None that I know of in 2021. So we're doing a good job. In the five school shootings we had in 2018, two of the incidents, no one died, which is great. So I think we're doing a good job. We've almost eliminated school shootings. Uh, I do have a problem with the five teen murders every day. But just like all homicide in the United States of America, most murder happens in urban inner city areas with children who don't have parents or they have horrible parents they're gang members they're violent themselves and most of this happens with handguns that are not recorded that are usually stolen so there are no easy answers to this we can't just say ban all the guns because it doesn't affect any of this these kids know how to get their hands on guns especially in urban areas um we could blame the parents, but most of these kids we're talking about don't really even have parents. So most of the incidents happen there. It's very rare when it doesn't happen that way. Okay. Um, of the 35,000 gun deaths we have in the United States, a good majority of them are suicides. People killing themselves. After you get past suicides, a good majority of the homicides happen in urban, inner city areas, people that are involved in gangs and drugs and street crime who don't follow any laws, especially gun laws. And it's a very, very tough problem. It would take a lot of money to solve that problem. So I hope you guys learned something today. Check out my book if you want. It's on my website, The Teen Killer Whisperer. I'll sign it for you before I mail it out. You can go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kindle, eBay, and get a copy of Inside the Mind of a Teen Killer. Well, um, I can't sign that because it doesn't come from my website. 
and check out my notebook, philchalmers.com slash notes. Download the notebook. Drop your questions in the, in the comments. Like this video. I appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos because I'm going to be interviewing a lot of teen killers coming up soon. Guys, be safe out there. If you see something, say something. Thank you. Doors unlocked. The gates open, allowing crews to get inside undetected. He got into the 1200 building <laughs> because that door was unlocked and unstaffed. And that we say that that is a security failure. A campus security monitor failing to call a code red after seeing crews carrying a rifle bag. The report saying the spray of bullets set off a fire alarm, sending panicked students and teachers out of their classrooms to escape. This picture capturing kids trapped helplessly in a crammed hallway. Meanwhile, cameras showing school resource officer Deputy Scott Peterson waiting outside on his radio instead of trying to stop the gunman. I think we got shots fired. Also, shots fired. 1200 building. Five minutes go by before police officers even enter the building. Cops using surveillance footage on a 20-minute delay to try to track down the armed assailant who had already escaped, according to the Sun Sentinel. They are monitoring the subject right now. He went from the third floor to the second floor. While they tried to locate Cruz, he's seen here a few blocks from campus at this McDonald's. Finally, just under an hour later, taken into custody. A judge entered a not guilty plea for Nicholas Cruz in March. Since the attack, the sheriff's office says it has made some major changes in policy. The findings and a list of recommendations for school safety will be turned over to the Florida governor, guys, next week. So many issues here. Not so having many. a PA system, having a security cameras that are on a 20 minute delay. Yeah, you have five minutes for police to enter the building. So think about what happened in those five minutes. Yeah. Yeah.